1983, President Ronald Reagan proposed his Star Wars plan amidst Cold War confusion. There was trouble in Beirut for the U.S. There was an invasion in Granada. David Bowie said, let's dance. The Rhythmics were given us sweet dreams. Lionel Richie was partying all night long. James Bond would never say never again. And Tangerine Dream was delivering great scores for films like Risky Business and a wonderful soundtrack for a young Michael Mann for a movie called The Keep. Plus, Roland unveiled the Jupiter 6. I'm Roland Perez. This is Alamo Music San Antonio, Texas. Be sure to check us out online at alamomusic.com and hop on our YouTube channel. Subscribe. We have a lot of videos coming up of vintage synthesizers, modern synthesizers, drum machines, and a couple of samplers as well. Check it out. As you may know, the Jupiter 6 is the little brother to the mammoth Jupiter 8. And although it might look the same in stature and some of the sliders might seem kind of the same, uh, it does offer something very different on the sonic palette. To me, this doesn't sound quite as rich as a Jupiter 8, but that's not a problem because the Jupiter 6 sonically has a lot of great attributes to it that you really can't get on any other synthesizer. Uh, one thing in particular that stands itself out from any other synthesizer is the fact that you can engage any which one of the waveforms all at the same time. So you have your sawtooth, sine, pulse width, and a noise generator. If at any point you wanted to engage all four of them, you just click down all four buttons on both oscillators and you can have all four going at the same time on both. That's something pretty unique. It does kind of rob the signal path just a little bit on volume or density of tone, but the fact that you can engage all four does offer something that's really, really cool. Uh, speaking of the oscillators, it's basically set up pretty simple. You've got your octave range for it. Of course, you have the waveform selectors on it. You could sync either which way. So for example, if you wanted a VCO1 to sync oscillator two, no problem. Click that switch and it's vice versa, which is pretty cool. Uh, you do have a cross mod selection right over here. Uh, it's really musical and really funky as well. So I really enjoy using this on the Jupiter 6. Uh, pulse width modulation right over here. VCO right over here. And of course you have your LFO right over here. LFO consists of your standard stuff, meat and potatoes. You've got your uh, different selectors right over here and you can determine the rate and the delay of it right over here. So if you look at the front panel, it does have some of the things you'd find on just about any of the synthesizer. You've got your oscillators, you've got your envelope section. So in this way, in this panel, you don't really have too much variation of what a regular synthesizer would do, right? Well, that's correct, until you get to the actual filter and the oscillators. This is where this keyboard is really unique and stands out amongst other keyboards costing four to five times as much, I think. The cool thing about the filter is that the slightest little variance of the filter frequency slider can make the hugest difference tone-wise. The first time I played a Jupiter 6, it kind of threw me off. I thought it wasn't calibrated properly because a small movement would have such a grand uh, throw, so to speak. So if you're using a Jupiter 6, you really have to learn how to use the filter or get used to the filter in a very different way. It's the same thing for the resonance as well. And this will self-oscillate if it's maxed out, which is really fun. You have a mixer section right over here, which can go from both oscillators in the middle or VCO2, VCO1. And although this is a really awesome and big sounding polyphonic synthesizer, I, I tend to use this thing a lot in mono mode. So if I click on solo right over here, that particular patch is now monophonic. And if you've ever played an SH-101 or a classic Roland SH-1 or an SH-5, you know that Roland as a mono synth has a very unique tone. Not, not at all like a Korg MS-20, not at all like a Moog. It's got its own thing going on. So while most people buy the Jupiter 6 as a polyphonic synth, the biggest attribute to me is using it as a monophonic synthesizer. Next to that, you also have unison mode, which is great because if you're in solo mode and you click on unison, you've got all 12 oscillators going at the same time. That's a pretty thick sound. But that unison also applies to polyphonic mode. So if I was in poly one or poly two mode, 
I can still click on the unison to get a much more bigger sound. Um, pretty awesome, pretty unique. The one thing that you kind of lose on this is the chorus effect that you would typically find on a Juno 60 or Juno 106. Uh, there's no onboard effects on it, but that's okay. Plug it into an external processor, a boss pedal, or an eventide if you had the luxury to do so. And you've got plenty of effects that'll take this keyboard to another whole other level. While on the top panel you see that it only has one LFO on the panel itself, there is a secondary LFO right over here in this modulation section. It's pretty cool because you can actually determine whether you want that secondary LFO to go to the oscillator or the filter. You can determine the rate of that and the rise. Although it's typical just a triangle kind of waveform, you won't get sample and hold on there or square, it's still a very cool LFO that's engaged by this bar right down here. There's a couple different key modes on this uh, Jupiter 6 that kind of make it stand out for a lot of synthesizers of that era. You do have home mode, you've got split uh, 4 to 2 or 2 to 4, and when you engage any one of these particular buttons, you'd have 4 note polyphony on the upper and 2 note on the bottom, or vice versa with the other switch. Uh, really cool if you're doing, say for example, an arpeggiated bass line on the bottom, and like a string pad or a brass patch on the top. Uh, or if you had solo mode on the top, you can basically use it as a monophonic lead synthesizer and a monophonic bass synthesizer on the bottom. Two different patches going at the same time, split right in the middle there. That's pretty cool. Of course, having all those different modes, you've got lower and upper. So this is your panel mode. If I click on lower, the lower patch is selected, and now I have all this panel to modify what's going on in the lower sound. If I click on the upper, the whole panel changes to exactly that, the upper patch. Um, pretty fast, pretty seamless. Other synthesizers like the Prophet 10 utilize something very much like that. And of course, right next to that, we have our banks and our presets for the banks. Pretty self-explanatory, very much like your Juno 106-ish kind of thing. You've got A through F on the banks, and you've got eight presets below that underneath each tab. Um, you can store your patches directly onto a couple of different uh, other patch banks. If you click on this button off, click on one of these tabs, you have four extra banks for storing your presets. All in all, it's a pretty cool synthesizer. It's definitely got that retro look to it. Has an amazingly cool sound. Speaking of the sound, I'd say that it's a little bit more mid-rangey, harmonic-y kind of thing compared to like a Jupiter 8, where I find the Jupiter 8 having a very wide bandwidth. Uh, this particular keyboard does mid-range and mid-harmonics extremely well. So it tends to punch through the mix uh, a little bit better than, say, for example, other keyboards of the era. Uh, once again, definitely having its own unique sound. On the back panel, you've got a couple cool things. You've got MIDI in and out, which was kind of rare back in that day. This was one of the first keyboards to use MIDI, aside from, uh, obviously, the sequential Prophet 600 and the DX7. Uh, and the Roland JX3P also had MIDI in that era as well. Uh, but the Jupiter 6 was definitely one of the first ones that actually did have MIDI. Although it's pretty primitive, you can get a Europa upgrade, uh, which would really expand the MIDI functionality as well as the arpeggiator functionality and, and also the preset banks as well. So if you're looking to purchase a Jupiter 6 and want to take it to the next level, I would definitely investigate that Europa mod. Also on the back panel, you've got your uh, line output section, which consists of a quarter inch jack, so it's mono out, but you also have an XLR output. That's actually pretty neat because when using the XLR out, it seems like it's going through a different output stage. It, to me, it sounds a little bit uh, brighter and it's a little bit louder than using just the quarter inch jack. So if you had the liberty to just plug the XLR out into like your mixer or recording system, Definitely do XLR as opposed to the quarter inch jack. It's just better. You've got your headphone jack and you have some external control. You've got VCF in, VCA in. You have your pedal hold, which is sustain. Patch shift, which is kind of cool where you can change patches with a pedal. And you've got your arpeggiator clock input. As always, I love talking about this. If you have an external drum machine, you could send that clock out into the arpeggio clock in and have the arpeggiator being clocked to your drums. Super cool. All in all, a fully faceted, great classic synthesizer that once again only sounds like it, the Jupiter 6. Well, that's enough talk about the Roland Jupiter 6. Let's check it out in action. I hope you enjoy it.
I hope you enjoyed listening to the Jupiter 6 and learning a little bit more about it. I had a lot of fun playing it, and as always, any rolling synthesizer I get to use is just fun days all the way. Be sure to check us out online, alamomusic.com. YouTube channel, please click subscribe. There's a lot of new videos coming out really, really soon. Thanks again for Alamo Music. I'm Roland Pettis.